<coughs> Shut up. Bono. Bono. Down to hey everyone, welcome, welcome. Any I was just on TikTok, so if you're a new follower from TikTok, say what's up? What's up? And uh if you're not, what's down? Dave Crossman's in here. Hello, handsome, hello, the lit script writer. Um I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug my show since we get enough people here, so, and then I'll answer some questions, and then I'll uh, do what's necessary. The Michael Jackson Jam and Beatbox Special. That is me. Where's that gong? Good question. Hey Mike, what's the best way to approach a producer? Uh, you know, say hey. You know, I don't know. Uh, reach out to them. I, there's no wrong way. There's no wrong way. Love your posts, entertaining and informative. Thank you, Daniel Ho Creations. Don't they have another name better than Showrunner? Well, why don't you come up with one? The showrunner runs the show. What's wrong with that name? What happens when an aspiring writer gets a dot on his head? What does that mean? Um, what you got for us today? Well, I'm if I if you're in the Boston area, I'm in Florida. Will the show be live streamed? No, it will not be live streamed. You have to come. Are you making any changes to paper orchestra after your first run? Yes, I am actually. Did you come to the show, August Solemnity? Um, did you come to see the show? Because I. If you did, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll tell you what the changes are. If not, what's, what's the point? Um, if you're in the Boston area, my show, Paper Orchestra, tickets are on sale now. And uh, and uh, if they're on sale now, go get them. Uh, go to michaeljammon.com slash live. Understand? Live. Uh, I have two shows, November 12th and 13th. The tickets are selling out fast. Um, they're selling out fast. But uh, there are there's still plenty of that available. It's, it's a small, intimate venue. So that's it. I hope to come see you there. It's been an hour-long show and followed by about a 20-minute Q&A. And, &A. and, uh, and if you want to see me in L.A., I will be performing. So Boston is November 12th and 13th. L.A. is December 10th and 11th. And uh, I hope to all see you there. The director should run the show like a movie. Okay. Um, let's see if I get some questions. I like. I just want to know what you learned from the experience and how you make adjustments. Oh, okay, August. Well, I, I so I do two stories. I perform two stories, and in between each story, I do I call them interstitials, where I kind of talk to the audience directly, so that it's a, so that the whole show is actually a story within a story. Oh, it's got layers, and so I've changed the story with I take, I've changed the interstitial pieces. Uh, I'm always trying to get closer. Yeah, I've changed. Just, why not? Why not see, see how they play? <clears throat> see see if I can get a little closer to, you know, why not see if I can improve it? If not, if these if the, my new changes don't work, I'll just go back to the old way. But um, I've always felt like maybe I could do better on those interstitials. So the last one, the last one I'm keeping the same, but one and two I'm changing. Um, okay. Do you have any family in Boston? How'd that location come out? Well, Benjamin, it's actually not Boston. It's actually um, uh, Amesbury, Amesbury, Massachusetts. And uh, so, oh, Mike Knox says, the show is a great way to learn writing too. Yeah, so if you're an aspiring writer, you'll definitely want to see the show because I talk about their personal essays. So I take the stories, I take stories from my life and I teach you how to, I show you how to turn it into an engaging narrative. So it feels like, I'm not just talking. You're like, it's a storytelling. Um, what was the question? Yeah. Oh, why Boston? Uh, well, I was invited there. Um, I was invited by a theater there. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. You know, people reached out to me and I was like, let's do it. Let's go to, let's go to Amesbury. What is your dream project? Why hasn't Siever been on your podcast? Oh, the last thing he wants to do is spend more time talking to me. I know it's a very general question, but what is the best way to start writing scripts? What should be my first steps when delving into the world of screenwriting? Well, you need to learn story structure. That's the first thing. If you, I, you know, take a course. You're welcome to take my course. It's at michaeljammon.com slash course. Bass face, or is it base face? Um, you can do take, but you study, study the craft. I mean, you know, there's, that's the first step. The first step starts with instruction. How to get ticked to Boston show again? How to get tickets? Trish USA, go to michaeljammon.com slash live, and you'll see a link there. Or you, can, or you can go, the link is also in my profile here on TikTok, or TikTok, Instagram. And, um, but anyway, michaeljammon.com slash live is where you can get the tickets. And uh, it's a small, intimate venue. 
So they're going fast. Uh, you know, it's not Carnegie Hall. It's, it's a small theater. So, <laughs> um, I've done production payroll for 20 years. I may have paid you at one time. Retiring from production soon and here to get some insight. Thanks for your post. Well, thanks for paying me. I mean, yeah, I, they usually pay me through those payroll services like uh, Entertainment Partners or whatever it's called. How did you get your first break? Uh, I was a joke writer on the on a morning TV show. I, I was a joke writer. How did I get that? You know, I don't remember how I got that. I think, I think my at the time my girlfriend knew the producer and they were taking submissions. I think that's how I got it. You know, you got to move. This is all in L.A. That was. If you weren't a writer, what profession would you have chosen? Good question, dude. I don't know. Luckily for me, things worked out because I don't know if I would have done very well in other professions. Heck yes, says Benjamin. Uh, what are your hobbies outside of work stuff? I, I do a lot of writing. I do. My hobbies are my hobbies are this writing this book, uh, diving into the screenwriting course. Dive into screenwriting with the Jammin course. Yes, famous Graves, L.A. He's one of my top-notch students. Thanks, Trish USA. Thank you. I hope to see you there. Let me know if you come. I, uh, let me know. I hope you oh, bring a friend. Bring a friend. We need this book performance as a TV series like the movie The Producers. So it's a show within a show within a show. Our Paul and Pals. It's funny. I was just talking to my manager um, this morning about it. Uh, you know, about what next steps. What are the next steps to take? Uh, okay. We'll let look it up now. Okay, Trish, I'll see you there. How are scripts tested? When stage plays are produced, they're normally tested out of town. Does TV production have a similar process? We have a table read where we read it out loud to actors and... But the actors read it out loud. <clears throat> we have a table read. Uh, and then, you know, it's basically rehearsal. You're selling tickets. Yeah, but you're selling tickets and is, on, and is on your way to touring with your show. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's no small thing to, uh, to do all that. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of work, but it's fun. Thank you. I've learned a lot from you. Been inspired to write down. Cheer. All right, cheers. The other day you said you don't you catch catchphrases. Just curious why. Bazinga. Uh, why don't I use catchphrases? I don't know. It's a little clammy, I guess. You know, it's a little clammy. It's a little hacky, I think. Uh, can you please reach back out? I don't know what that means. What, I don't know what me, Kath, goat 24. Can you please reach back out? I don't know what that means. Um, I tested for your series Tacoma. Oh, congratulations. Hope so. Yes. Good. All right. All right. Trish USA. I hope you see you there. Any tips for podcasters? <laughs> and the show, by the way, Trish USA has a, has a, um, a Q and a at the end. So uh, raise your hand and I'll be able to talk to you. That's all. That's, that's, that's all there is. Any tips for podcasters? Not really. Or you make a pilot for Paramount and never get seen like me because it tested poorly. That can happen for sure. At least you got it made. Oh, people are sending some, a lot of hearts, a lot of hearts here on InstaFace. Is there someone? Nope. Okay. Uh, hey. Um, that's it. What was your hardest character you've had to write for? Probably, um, I don't know. Good question. I have to think about that. I have to think about that. Hey, Michael, any tips for two creative projects at once? Any tips for trying two creative projects? My, any, my tips would be the same for one. Did anyone bring different dates to paper orchestra in the first run? I wouldn't know. I, I encourage people to, but I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. You know, the thing, you know, here's the thing about being a performer. You know, the lights are on me. I could barely see the audience. I hear the laughs and stuff like that. But as a writer on a sitcom, how likely is it to be able to put yourself in as a guest star or recurring? Very unlikely. <clears throat> and you wouldn't want to either, you know. Uh, on my show, like, I don't want to put me in it. I, I, want to, I want to get the best possible actor for the role. Although I've done some acting, but, you know. Certainly will. I'm trying my very first script, and I'm so glad I found you on Instagram. Oh, good, Trish. Women characters harder to write for... Women characters harder to write for a man? Uh, I suppose, but, um, you know, we have women on staff to, like, you know, to check. Like for people to buy... Like for people to buy a copy of the script. I don't know what that means. <clears throat> Has an actor ever asked you to change your arc or give them more jokes? Yeah, absolutely. Happens all the time. Not so much the arc, but... But uh, certainly they might have a problem with a line or a joke. That happens all the time. It's not, I mean, it's not even a big deal. Every single show, they say, eh, can, 
I'm not feeling this line. All right, I'll see what I can come up with. Uh, if you're an actor like me, you'd want guys like Michael and Brent Forrester to take over and focus on acting, I feel. Uh, what? Uh, and fo- oh, and focus, yeah. Not even in your industry, but your advice is invaluable. Thank you. Yeah, a cash money millionaire. You're welcome. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're getting something out of it. Maybe if you're in the Boston area or in the LA area, come see my show. I'm plugging it right now. Tickets are now available. Boston up the Amesbury Theater, November 12th and 13th. Tickets are at michaeljammon.com slash live. And then two shows in LA, December 10th and 11th. Go get those. Also at michaeljammon.com slash live. Crossman has a question. Let's get to that one. Is there a particular page count for writing a show Bible? I don't, you don't need to write a Bible, so zero. How about that? Have you ever been the person who decided if assistant would get the bump? And if so, what convinced you one way or the other? Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I've given, my partner and I have given assistants uh, bumps. We gave a guy, a couple times we've given assistants scripts. You know, hey, here's a script. You can write this script. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, if they're not ready. But uh, you try to give people a break if you can. If you can. What are some television shows that inspired your writing? Oh, you know, I, you know, as a kid, I watched Cheers. I watched, I watched every sitcom as a kid. And so that's what made me want to be a writer, you know. I just watched an episode, an old episode of 30 Rock today. I thought it was great. Did you ever watch, just watch the shows you you write and are in shock with how they portrayed on screen? No, not really. You know, not in shock. How do you test if a joke is funny? Well, we have a writer's room and the, someone will pitch the joke out loud and people laugh. It's funny and people don't laugh. It's not. It's kind of simple. Are there any plans to publish a script of a paper orchestra? I'd love to read it in some sometime. Yeah, Quinn... Quinn, there is. It's not a script. It's a it's a book. So it will be a book, right? And and then for sure, Quinn, if you'd like to DM me your email, and I'll put you on a list to be notified uh, when the book is out. So you know you can go buy it. That's that's a good way because you know I, you may not be able to see my Instagrams or whatever. So DM me your email address, and I'll just keep you posted. I delivered season one to a that uh, season one to a network recently. How long would you wait before discussing a season two with a network? What do you mean you delivered season one to a network? What does that mean? You delivered the episodes or delivered a script? Delivered, what did you deliver? Cookies? Really? What would I need to pitch a TV series? Uh, you don't get to pitch a TV series, William. You don't. I don't. You're getting bad advice from people. You don't. You have to, you know, you have to work your way up. They don't let strangers off the street pitch a TV series. You got to get an agent. You got to get a manager. You got to work your way in. You need sample scripts. You got to write a spec script. You don't just walk in off the street. You know, it doesn't work that way. A TV series is a lot of money. They're not going to just trust it to someone who's never done it before. I have a hard time selling a TV show and I've been doing it 26 years. So William, welcome. You're new to my page. I would suggest for you sign up to my watch list, which is my free newsletter. It goes out every Friday. You can sign up by going to michaeljammon.com slash watch list. Uh, you can also listen to my podcasts. We just posted episode... I don't know, we recorded episode 53. So, it's, you know, we're getting traction. My YouTube channel. Cheers, Taxi. Yeah, and I, were, I, wrote, I wrote with a bunch of Cheers and Taxi writers. You know, it was great working side by side with them. Fellow Hollywood big shot popping in. Yes, Kwan is, a, is definitely on the move. Have to go now. This is great. All right, Trish, see you in Boston. How many people on average are in a writer's room at one time? Eh, I'd say around eight or ten. Eight or ten, usually. Usually, oh, I got all my questions answered. Terrific. Early in your career, were you ever been brought in to work on a TV show you were already a fan of? Sure, I was a fan of King of the Hill when I was brought in. Those are great shoes. Very funny. Best pilot episode you've ever seen? Huh? I don't know. Thanks for your advice. You're welcome. You guys got to watch every podcast of his. They're so good and so much more in depth than the short videos. Yeah, thank you, D- Doctor Doctor Marketing Pro. Um, will your audio book be essentially the same as your stage show? Well, not really. I mean, because I, in the stage show, I have interstitial pieces that you, that won't be in the book at all. Um, but you're right. I mean, the, the book will be, the audio book will be performed somewhat similar. Yeah. That part will be similar, except you're listening, not hearing or watching. Yeah. Thank you for the awesome live. You're welcome. 
Episode 53, has it been a year already? Congrats. Yeah, it's been a year. I mean, we've only posted 51 or so, but we've, you know, we've just recorded 53. Who was the guest 53? Oh, Jim Serpico, uh, producer. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. I learned a lot from, from, from that one. I haven't seen Abbott Elementary. Are you sad? I'm not sad. What do you do in your free time? I guess I do this. I read. I guess I read. Do you think publishing on Amazon is a good idea to start? Sure, absolutely. Best sitcom I didn't write on? Well, I didn't write on Dirty Rock. I didn't write on Arrested Development. I didn't write on Cheers. I didn't write on Frasier. This is a long list. Uh, There's a long list of best shows I didn't write on. How many bad jokes are you allowed before you get booed, booted from the team? Uh, it's it's not so much your jokes so much as the drafts. You know, as you're writing, if you're writing, if your first draft comes in like crap, then you're then you're in trouble. Uh, but yeah, bad jokes will are not don't reflect well on you at all. Will the live will the live be saved on your account in ITV? No, Art, but my lives are posted on my YouTube channel. So go subscribe to my YouTube channel which is also at Michael Jammin Writer. And there we, we, we post my lives. Do you do a lot of research in writing? For example, you want the joke to work and not have people who know just a bit about the subject. Yeah, I mean, we try to do research all the time, sure. By the way, we really appreciate how you're addressing every question. It's rare in lives. Yeah, is it? I, I don't really watch other people's lives. <laughs> Dodger game is on. Okay, see, I even addressed the Dodger game comment. But yeah. Rob Cohen's interview podcast was really good. Really loved the interview. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one, isn't he? Rob's a great guy. All right. Are there any shows you wish you hadn't written for? Well, if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. I will subscribe to your YouTube channel. That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that's it. We got a bunch of new people joining. If you- Okay, let me just tell you what's going on for the new people. Did you work on The Office? I got to work with Paul Lieberstein in his made-for-TV film, and he seemed like a really nice guy. No, but you know what? I didn't work on The Office, but when I joined King of the Hill, Paul left. So me and my partner took Paul's old office on King of the Hill. That's my connection to Paul Lieberstein, The Office. Not The Office the show, The Office that I worked in. When setting, when up for staffing, how important is it to be funny when meeting the showrunner and team? You don't want to be annoying. It's really more important to show that you're a person... That's not going to drive them crazy because you're going to be locked in a room with them for, you know, days and hours. So you don't want to be, it's not about being funny. It's like, am I going to, am I going to like this person? That's what it really is about. If you're in the Boston or LA area, tickets are now on sale for a paper orchestra, which is my one man show. Boston, I'm going to meet the Amesbury Theater, November 12th and 13th. I'm gearing up for that. That's a month away. (laughs) And then the, just, and then back in LA for December the 10th and 11th. In December, that's two months away. I hope to come see you. For tickets, go get it. My, uh, MichaelJammin.com. Each show is, slash live. Each each show is about an hour long, followed by a 20-minute Q&A. People really like the Q&As. They don't want to leave. <clears throat> do you give other upcoming writers advice? What do you think I'm doing here? What do you think I'm doing here? I'm, I'm asking, I'm answering questions from writers. <laughs> that's what I do. Has this, uh, has the approach, by the way, um, Two things to talk about. You know, I do have a, a, a free lesson, free screenwriting lesson. If you want to grab that, it's at michaeljammin.com slash free. There's like three different emails I send out. And uh, and I, meant, I made the mistake the other day of calling it. I thought each video was like five or ten minutes long. I, don't, I haven't watched it. In, I, I recorded these videos a couple of years ago. And then someone trolled me. You said five or ten minutes and they were two. Two minutes. I'm like, yeah, you want your money back? I mean, they're free. You want your money back? No, but you said. And I'm like, block. Like, what do you want? You know, all right, fine. They're there. Do you want them? You can watch them or not. What do you want? You want more free? I don't know. And then the other thing is, um, uh, Friday is my my newsletter, my free newsletter. So get on that. And I send out my best. The best of my best goes out in my that newsletter. That's at michaeljammin.com slash watch list. And now I'm going to answer some questions. Has... Has the approach, has the approach the writing changed in any way since you started your career? If yes, how so? I approach my writing very differently now. Writing hasn't changed. I have changed. You know, I, I know more about. I know how to do it better. You know, that's so my approach has changed. But that's it. Ha ha! I delivered a series, not cookies, to a network in Canada. Oh, okay. I was the exec producer. I was just curious how long you'd wait before setting up a meeting about season two. 
they 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 pitch you know you know you don't set up a meeting basically the show airs and and they they wait for the ratings and then they call you and decide whether they're going to buy more you don't there's no meeting has to be set they'll let you know if they want more <laughs> you don't have to set up a meeting you know they let you know you need, someone will call you the agent or a manager will call you they got the pickup you're ready to go and you start to get to work do I know Aaron Sure, Yeah. Uh, not well, but I know him a little bit. Yeah. We we emailed, we traded a couple of emails. Uh, he had a question about some talent and he reached out to me maybe a year or two ago and we talked a little bit. Canadian TV is underrated. Yeah. I did a Canadian show once. I just got really good feedback on my script. People are loving it, but what can I do to stay pop proactive instead of leaving it alone? Write another one. Write another one. That's what I would do. Got any Stalin Stalin jokes? All my Stalin all my all my Stalin joke jokes are Stalin. There, you can have that one if you want it. How would you approach writing an anthology series like Love, Death, Robots, or Black Mirror? Um, I would I don't I wouldn't enjoy that. I mean, I love I don't know the first show, but I love Black Mirror. You know, you're really creating characters from whole cloth. I think anthology anthology shows are really hard to sustain. Um, each one is a standalone. You know, I, I wouldn't. It, it's just, it doesn't interest me. But as much as I love it, I love Black Mirror, you know. I would check out your website. Love would love your energy. All right, William, I'll see you on my website. Sign up for all of my free stuff I offer. Have you ever written a pilot only to see another show premiere with a similar premise? Sure, that happens sometimes. It is what it is. It is what it is. Hollywood is in dire need of new material. Studios are too much in debt. Working on a fish out of water pilot, anything to look out for when I'm reading other scripts. Uh, don't copy it, I guess. Don't do what they're doing. And, you know, do, make it original. Do you work with great writers, meaning representing? Do you work with great writers, meaning representing? What do you mean? Oh, do I represent? Great? No, I'm not an agent. I'm not a manager. I'm a, I'm a writer. I don't, I don't represent writers. Sorry. Have you ever written stand-up or written jokes for stand-up comedians? Yes, I've, I've done stand-up years ago when I was like right out of, in college and out of college. And I've sold some jokes to stand-up comedians. But that's not that, – I don't make my living that way. That's just stuff I've done, you know. Um, I'm going to subscribe to your YouTube channel. You ought to. It's free. Everyone should. Everyone here should. At Michael Jammin Writer is my YouTube channel. i got good stuff on there. Uh Spain's shows are hitting out of the park. Melissa, Angelina, are you are you from Spain? Melissa, Melissa, Melissa Angelina, vienes de España? ¿Cuál ciudad? Porque viví en España, pero hace un montón de tiempo. Hace un montón de tiempo. Viví en el, el País Vasco y también uh, en Sevilla. En Sevilla, donde estudiaba. Okay. Uh, I'll do the rest in English now, since most of you don't speak Spanish. Is it better to get your script or show picked up by Netflix instead of other networks like Fox? No, no, you get, do you, you'll get your show. Whatever you sell your show, you take it. You know, you're not going to have your choice of selling your show. It's like if Netflix wants it, great. ABC wants it, great. Your gratitude. Do you know Larry David? Actually, I don't. I've never, I've never worked with him. I know who he is, though. Do you know, do you like your mar margaritas frozen or on the rocks? When are we going to get another sitcom in a bar that's funny? Yeah, they don't usually do a lot of, I don't drink margaritas. Uh, uh, and bar, yeah, I don't know about bar shows. I'm sure I've written alongside great writers. I've written for sure. I've, I've written some, with some very, very, very talented writers. My brain doesn't work for stand-up. My jokes only come from situations. Do you get residuals on the stand-up jokes? No. Now those are done. Toronto, crisp arcs. I'd love to come to Toronto. DM me. I just someone just asked me if I was going to come to Toronto. So why don't you DM me your email address and I'll keep you posted. And say Toronto. Whoa! Now I'm a bigger fan of you after hearing your Spanish. Well, what you haven't even heard my Italian. Parlo I just went into Spanish. Parlo anche italiano. Al dire il vero, parlo italiano anche meglio che che parlo che parlo spagnolo perché well whatever. I speak Spanish, I speak Italian too. Uh, I'm doing Tacoma FD Writers of Super Troopers, which is all the time. Yeah, those guys are great. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate your time. You're welcome, William. Be be well. Add me to your live. You're a cool guy. <laughs> Thanks. You like the show Dairy Girls? Never heard of it. Will you be dressing up for Halloween? No. I'm Canadian. 
lived in Mission Viejo. Yes, come. Uh, yeah. Well, if you would like to come see me in Mission Viejo, I'm not in Mission Viejo. I'm Canadian. Uh, but uh, yeah, but come see me perform in LA or Boston. I have two shows and I'm, 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 I'm pimping them out. A paper orchestra. That's the back. Where's the back? There's the back. Uh, and uh, tickets are on sale at michaeljammon.com slash live. So if you live in the Boston area, I'll be performing there November 12th and 13th in Amesbury, Massachusetts, and in LA, the 10th and 11th uh, in Atwater Village. So come see me. Tickets are on sale at michaeljammon.com slash live. You're awesome. Damn straight I am, strictly for music. Thank you. Love to shoot me. You're awesome too. I speak Italian too. Seven languages. Seven? Oh, I don't speak seven. I speak three. Seven... Seven languages, four more than three. So I, I tip my hat to you. Uh, much love from Toronto. Thanks for the motivation. You're keeping me going. Good, Noel. Noel, are you on set of films you write? Uh, no, I, uh, film, TV, I don't, I don't, I work in movies. I, I work in TV, so I don't, in TV, yes, I'm on set quite a bit, but uh, I don't work in film. Any favorite books we should read? Hmm. What, uh, I don't know. I'm a big fan of David Sedaris. Which writing program do you use? Uh, most industry professionals use Final Draft, but you don't need to worry about that. You write whatever. You use whatever you want to use. Good Girls was a good show, but the writers fumbled. I don't know what that show is. Add me to your live because I have questions on the show. Don't really know how to use this app. Uh, no, I, I don't add people to the live. Um, if you have a question, you can submit it the way you submit here. So, I mean, that seems reasonable. It works that way. Everyone gets to ask me a question and no one monopolizes anything other than me. I'm the, mono I'm the monopolizer. I'm a tyrant when it comes to my channel. When should you copyright your screenplays? Uh, I don't. I never do. You could submit to the Writers Guild. You could register it with the Writers Guild. Uh, but I don't give legal advice, so I don't really know what to tell you on that. Why does distribution of movies often cost as much or more than producing? It's not so much distribution. It's the, it's, it's promotion. It's publish. It's like putting up the posters and ads and stuff like that. What shows have you worked on? Well, you can go to my IMDB page and look it up. I've written on a lot of shows, like too many to list. Do you ever worry about any jokes you want on a script that might be considered too far or inappropriate or how do you go forth with it anyway? Hoping they accept one, well, hope, you know, yeah, sometimes I go far and the showrunner, if I'm not the showrunner, the showrunner will say you've gone too far. Or sometimes they have standards and practices, which is like the censors at the network. And they say you've gone too far. But I don't like to censor myself. Why? I don't want to take away from that's someone else's job. Why would I want to take their job away from them? Let them censor me. <clears throat> Favorite show on TV? I don't know. Everyone wants to know that stuff. He's done a lot. Impressive resume. Yeah. How can I get my music to a TV show? I don't know. Uh, I hope to have as a guest uh, on my podcast, like some music composers. I'll reach out to them. And so I would suggest you subscribe to my podcast because I'm getting great guests on it. Uh, and they answer quite like, so I had a producer on. I've had, you know, rather writers. Yeah, I, I'm getting interesting people. Friends mostly, you know, friends of mine. Is there a difference in the approach to writing a mini series as opposed to writing a traditional series? Uh, only insofar as that the ending is closed. When you're doing a miniseries, you know, like you know, you're building to an end. So a miniseries is really, it's really a movie. To be honest, it's like a, it's writing a movie. You're just, you know, you're, you're maybe it's like a long movie. No one wants to sit through a, like a six hour movie. Uh, so that's the difference. What is your show about? Really want to learn how to write. What is your show all about? What's that red dot in your forehead? Well, that's a cut. Uh, my show is a, it's a collection of, it's my I, a stage reading of my personal essays, and that's what it's about. Uh, so if you're in Boston or LA area, come see me. Uh, and writers will definitely get a lot out of it. Do you ever begin writing a story with only characters in mind before a plot or a theme? No, I, would, I wouldn't know what the characters do. I mean, you got they go hand in hand. If you could have any dinner, dinner with one person in the industry, who would it be? Oh, probably David Sedaris. I, I, you know, I like his writing so much. What is your mix of writing management when you're use, when you are a co-ep, co-executive producer? What is your executive? Oh, sixty to forty. Uh, it's really just just depends on what the boss wants you to do when you're co-executive producer. But it's almost almost all writing. It's almost all writing. I don't really manage. If you're executive producer, then you're managing people. But as a co-executive, you're just a head. You're just a writer, a high level writer. 
Are you doing script consultations or notes via your teaching courses? Uh, no, most working writers don't won't read someone's script because it exposes you to liability. Like, yeah, I don't want to be accused of stealing anyone's idea. Plus, it would be a lot. Um, I'd have to charge a lot, you know, because my time is worth a lot. But I really feel that my course, um, like if I were to read you, if I were to work, you know, give, give notes on your script, I'd have to charge you an arm and a leg. And for you, for a better deal, you would get more information in my course. You just would. The course is 14 hours or more, actually. So uh, it's a much better deal. You and, and if I were to give you notes, I would just be repeating stuff on the that you I already said in the course. You know, so why would you want to? Anyway, do you only do sitcoms? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, water. We need to get you a spindrift. Yeah, I know. I got a lot of spindrifts. I have to drink water sometimes. What is your writing process? Uh, I talk about this a little bit in my one-man show. If you want to come see that, I talk about the my process. I really go into it in, in detail. Uh, I don't have an easy answer for that. You know, I don't have any. I don't have. A, I don't have a one-second answer for that. What moment gig would you credit as your golden ticket into the industry after which you've been fairly secured here? Well, it was really basically getting staffed on Just Shoot Me. Once you become a staff writer, uh, your stock goes up as long as you don't get fired. And so I was a staff writer on Just Shoot Me for, you know, four seasons. And then I moved on to King of the Hill. And then from there, you know, I've, you know, I've worked steadily ever since. Uh, any chance of a paper orchestra making it to D.C.? Guy... Uh, there is a chance. I just don't know when. Uh, I'd love to. I just need to have a bigger, you know, I, I basically it's like this. So when I, uh, when I generally, when I go to a city, I need to have a, a large list of people to be able to sell tickets to. And if I only have like five people on my list, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put it to a show there. Why would I, you know, I'm not going to sell out. How do you feel about Kanye? So, you know, I got to build my following and I got to build my list. That's all. So that's why I say for any of you who want me to come to your city, just DM me your email address and your what city. How do you feel about Kanye's rants? Well, you know he's he's got mental illness. I mean, so how do you how do you take him? How do you even get angry at him? He's mentally ill. You know. Uh, how many tickets have you sold? I know. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Uh, of course, I don't know what that refers to. What is a trope you think is underused in television? I don't really think about tropes. That answer and script feedbacks makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome, Benjamin. Will you be at the Austin Film Festival? No, because I, I have not, I'm not submitting. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a filmmaker. I'm a TV writer. Wow, they're commendable. Uh, okay, yeah, probably, I don't know. Come to Central Florida. Well, DM me what city you're, you want me to come to, you know, and your email address. When you're feeling lazy, do you just hire someone on Fiverr to write your scripts? No, unfortunately. Subscribe to your YouTube channel. Thank you for all the great info. You're welcome, the Donna Cooper. The Donna Cooper. You can also check out my uh, my watch list, which is my free newsletter. It goes out every Friday. MichaelJammon.com slash watch list. All of it's free, guys. What's the worst idea you pitched? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't think I've ever pitched any bad ideas. To, I mean, you know, to try to sell. Uh, Toronto will be good for you. Lots of talent in Canada, which I feel is sometimes overlooked. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. to Melissa. If you want to DM me your email address and I get to Toronto, I know people want me to come there, but again, I have to have a big list or else I'm just not going to sell tickets. You know, this is how it works. Like if I have a list of a hundred people in a city, uh, only 50, if I'm lucky, 50 will show up. hundred people say they want to show up, but only 50 buy tickets. So, you know, I need, honestly, I need a giant list to be able to, uh, go to your city. So just DM me your email address. And, uh, I know a lot of people are very protective, but you know, I'm not going to spam you. It's only for, uh, it's only for that. Only for, you know, um, what city you're in. Um, will do. Yes. Come to Toronto. I don't know how to say your name. I, I want to say, I want to say your name right, but I'm going to butcher it. Is that it? I said it wrong. I bet you know how to say your name right. Josh, a lot of people, a lot of people want me to come to Toronto. All right. All right. But here's the thing. So far, like three or four people have said, come to Toronto, but not one of you have DM'd have DM me your email address. <laughs> so you don't want me to come that bad. <laughs> See, that's how it goes. So if you, the truth is, <laughs> this is the truth of selling out a, uh, selling out a show. The truth is, cause they, people say, if a hundred people say to you, come to my city and you say, okay, give me your DM, your, send me your email address. And then only 50 send your, the email address. And of those 50, only 25 buy, actually buy tickets, 
You see my problem? You see my problem? Yes, you great. Oh, good. Somehow I got her name right. Good. You see the problem. Toronto's good for the list. We'll do. Upstate New York. Upstate New York. Upstate is a big state. Upstate is a big state. I need to know like Syracuse. I need to know Albany. I set up an uh, email and I never got anything from you. Um, did you check? Did you check your D, your junk file? You know, it, it, especially if you're on G, uh, Gmail, it, it will probably go to your promotions tab. It goes out automatically. You understand? So I, it's not like it goes into a list, and it's not like we selectively choose who gets the email. And the, you know, it goes out to everybody. So if you didn't get it, it's possible your your spam filters are high, and there's nothing I can do about that. It's like you have to change your spam settings. I can't do that. Uh, but you can always DM me uh, or, or email support at michaeljammon.com and we could double check the list uh, to make sure that you actually got on it. Maybe there's a glitch or something, but um, that's, you know, you know, for the most part, if you're not getting my emails, it's, it's, it's on you, unfortunately, you're not, not your fault, but it's your email, it's your email subscriber, you know, server's fault. Uh, I'll DM you after the live. All right, crisp. Which part of upstate New York? I'm from Rochester. See, we got people sending email now. All right, good. Syracuse. Good, good, good. Half of the people are talking about Toronto, Illinois. So make sure you're specific in your pickle venue. Well, yes, please make sure if you're from Toronto, Illinois, which I've never heard of. Um, uh, do you and your writing team ever do formal roast sessions of each other or is it every day or never? We just joke around a lot. I wouldn't call them formal roast sessions. Is an hour too long for an animated pilot? Absolutely. It should be half hour. Half hour. Your comedy should be half hour, not an hour. Wouldn't be surprised if I found more in Toronto than Boston. Just saying. Might surprise you. Melissa? Surprise me. Get on that. Get DM, send me your, your email. I got your... I get your watch list emails on Gmail just fine. Oh, see, that's good. I hate screenwriting, man. I suck. I tried, but I just suck. Well, I'm, I don't tell you. I'm sorry about that. You might want to take a course. Take my course if you're interested. I'm talking about Toronto, Canada. I know. Everyone's getting mad about Toronto. If I'm okay. All right. So we got some people still on. A lot of people just joining, so I'll catch them up real fast. Oh, wait. What's this over here? Um... A lot of people are just joining, in which I say welcome. So if the, to the new people, what am I talking about? Well, if you are in Boston or in L.A. Uh, all right, this guy's just, I'm going to, this guy's just being, uh, okay. If you're in Boston or in, or L.A., uh, you can come see my show. It's called The Paper Orchestra. And, uh, and tickets are now on sale, are not on sale Uh at michaeljammon.com slash live. I got two shows in November, uh, two shows in November in Boston, November 12th and 13th at the uh, Amesbury in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Then two in um, in LA, December 10th and 11th. Tickets are on sale, michaeljammon.com slash uh, live. Go get them now while you can. It's a small, both are small venues, so they will sell out. So it's not like, uh, it's not like a giant, you know, it's not Shea Stadium. So you can't wait till the last minute. I would take your course if I had 5K in savings. Well, the course isn't 5K, but okay. Uh, it's not. It's nowhere near that, but okay. Um, how many hours a day do you write? It depends on the day, but you know, a lot. I would say, oh, you know, a lot. I, I, well, I lose creativity, which is why I do these posts at, at night. I wouldn't. I don't like writing at night. Would you suggest I write a novel before a screenplay? I'm writing all the time, but I feel like I could make a novel. Yeah, do it. I, I would. I would encourage you to do a novel first. Um, Uh, another great live. Thank you, Baring, Bar Baringer. You're, thank you, thank you. Have you ever considered writing for video games? No, doesn't interest me. What are some really cool experiences you've had while working on a television show? Uh, I can't think of anything offhand, but I share them on my, when I have one, I share them on my page. So, you know, you can scroll through my, my channel and dig them up. To the guy who's thinking of screenwriting, yeah, some of us just like to hear you talk. So it's a treat that I've been on live I've been on for a while and new people join. It certainly is. Thank you, Malfunction. Malfunction. Uh, how do you work consistently on your scripts? I don't know. We sit out, I just sit down and I, I turn on the computer, I guess. Is that the answer you're hoping for? But it's, it's not the answer you're hoping for, but it's the answer you needed. Uh, have to depart. All right, The Honest. Thank you. Thank you for, um, thank you for joining. 
Thank you for, for watching. I'm going to depart too soon. It was like, what do you think about all the censorship? I don't, I don't really get censored, so I don't know. I don't, I'm not really getting censored. Uh, I really like what you said about characters and their choices as that what makes them interesting. Yeah, well, that's the truth. That's the truth, Melissa. You know, I, I, I have more wisdom like that in my screenwriting course, if you're interested. It's michaeljammon.com slash course. How long does it take to write a first draft? Uh, well, you write an outline first. The outline takes about a week. First draft takes about a week. I went to a great bar in Rochester. Okay. Just wanted to thank you for your words of wisdom. Real Alex Suarez, you're welcome. Did you like Boogie Nights? I did, but I haven't seen it in 30 years. Is it important to solely focus on one pilot at a time or is it good to always have new ideas? And Yeah, it's whatever's working for you, whatever works for you. Do you come up with ending of the story before you start to write? Uh, sometimes you change the ending as you halfway through if you realize it's not going to work, but um, yeah. Uh, that's it. That's it. Um, okay. Okay. I'm going to bounce off. I think I answered all the questions. Um, whew, I'm pooped from talking. I've been on this thing too long. Okay, everyone. Last call. Last announcement. For tickets to my one-man show, A Paper Orchestra, go to michaeljammon.com slash live. I'm, I'm going to be in the Boston area in November and LA in December. Go get your tickets now uh, and sign up for my free newsletter. That's at michaeljammon.com slash watch list. And uh, if you'd like to get my free screenwriting lesson, you can go to michaeljammon.com slash free. And if you can't remember anything I just said, all these links are in my bio. You can find it there. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for following. And uh, until the next time, be well.